uh, first time visitors this morning, we have a gift for you. <laughs> Is she really a first time visitor back there? <laughs> I think she's joking. Let's take a few minutes to greet each other in Christian fellowship. Please remember to sign in this morning in the little red books. They're at the end of each pew. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worshiping God as we silently listen to the prelude.
please stand and let us say the call to worship together. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Let us say the opening prayer together. Lord of all, pray for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Amen.
Thanksgiving week. We have so much to be thankful for. We are sitting in this nice warm church surrounded by people who love us and we love, well, for the most part. And yet in our minds, we have the pictures of um, what we saw on the news with uh, the devastation in California by the fires. And so um, with that in mind, what are you thankful for most this Thanksgiving? I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward. <clears throat> and we will take up our Thanksgiving offering. Let us pray. O oh Lord, reach out and touch this offering, these tithes that we give to you. Bless them, Lord, multiply them, and let them be used for the furthering of your kingdom, both in this town, in this church, and to the far ends of the earth. In your name we pray. Amen.
bunch of kids, uh, followed by Joyce. I know you've got a second one, I know. <clears throat> I'm talking while they're moving things. So, because I can always fill in, you know. <clears throat> but what a talented group of kids. And let me tell you, they're all reading music. And the difference between using the small bells that they did last year and the um, chimes is huge. So uh, Joyce has done so much work with them, and we ha they're just so talented. Now we hear another talent. Good morning. Good morning. You only have a couple of weeks of school this week, right? Two, a couple of weeks. I meant a couple of days. I, don't worry. Pastor doesn't know what she's talking about. So, um, It's Thanksgiving, right? Can you believe that? We've already had snow, and so we're in the things. I almost Christmas. You're absolutely right. It snows, so it has to be Christmas, right? So um, I've got a couple of things to ask you, but I'm going to risk this. I'm going to give you the microphone. I want you each to tell me something you're thankful for, okay? We'll start here. I know you've got a candy cane in. Something you're thankful for. Candy cane. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. God. Dog, okay. Helping. Family. Jesus. Helping doing Christmas trees. Christmas trees, okay. What are you thankful for? Pie. Pie, good one. <laughs> yeah, they like that one. God. God. Holy crap. Okay. <clears throat> Pass it down the line there. There we go. My family. Playing, playing with my toy. Okay. School. School. Awesome. Friends. Friends. Okay. Awesome. Gosh, what a lot of different things. All of those things we're thankful for. And I heard God and Jesus and just family, just all these different things. Over the last few weeks upstairs in junior worship, you have been studying what we have been studying, part of Believe, and we have learned 
that we are to give our gifts to God, our spiritual gifts. What are some of those gifts? What are some of the spiritual gifts we can give to God? Love, excellent. Is there another one? Can you think of one? Oh, okay. All the talents that he gives us, you all have talents. Doing good in school, working our best, that's a really good one. Food, yes. And learning, okay. All right, so that was um, sharing our gifts. And then we can move to sharing our resources. Now, here with the adults, we talked a lot about money. How many of you have lots of money? Oh, my goodness. Whoa, I should, you do. I should have talked to you, too. Lots and lots of money. Okay, what are some of our resources we can give to God? How can we help God with our resources? By listening. That's a good resource. Loving. Singing in church. Good. Doing good stuff for other people. Very good. Praying. That's a good one. Listening. Wow, you guys are doing great. And today we're going to talk about sharing our faith. What are some ways do you think we can share our faith? Harder one. Spreading, spreading the word of Jesus. Very good. Oh, spreading the word of Jesus. Okay, telling others about Jesus. Coming to church. That's a good one. Doing anything that helps God with ourselves. Okay. All right. So keeping ourselves. In, um, in God's will. Worshiping. Worshiping. Okay, all of these are ways we show our faith. How about this? How about the things you do and say and the things you choose not to do and not to say? That tells other people without even using the name of Jesus that you love Jesus. For example, you have a school friend who decides to do something that you know is wrong. Don't follow him. That's showing others that you follow Jesus because Jesus wouldn't want you to do that. Or even saying some of the things that you hear in school that other kids may say, and you know that's not the right thing to say, right? And by living like that now, when you become adults, you'll live like that wherever you go, and people will know that your heart belongs to Jesus. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, we thank you for these children. We thank you for the gifts you've given them, for their willingness to listen and to learn and to love you. Continue to bless them, Lord, and keep them safe. In your name we pray, and all God's children say, amen. Can you take that to the... uh,
come to our prayer time today, we want to remember um, those who are uh, on our shut-in list and those who are in the uh, nursing homes, especially this week. Um, Carla Gregory's mother has moved to um, Kingston, um, so she's there. So if you get a chance maybe to visit her, I know she would appreciate that. Just a couple of uh, reminders that I want to bring up now. On our table um, that's by these, this set of doors here where you come in, um, our information table, there are some sheets with the summary of the three proposals that will go before General Conference in February. I have been talking about this, and um, this was a sheet put out uh, by West Ohio Conference. So you can take one, take as many as you want. Uh, we can put more there. There were about 11 of us from this church that went to a meeting that the bishop had to explain these proposals and just listen to what people had to say um, in, in our area. I am gonna be holding a meeting um, soon, um, just an open meeting um, where people can come and I will do my best to describe the difference between the three proposals. Um, there may be more proposals coming forward um, so that you can know what we're looking at ahead. And then I wanna hear what questions you have. I may not be able to answer them, but I will try. Um, and what, what you're feeling on this whole uh, subject. So I will let you know very soon when that is gonna be. Tomorrow we have the Connect program here, and if you are planning to die anytime soon, or even in the future, and you have not made any plans, why don't you um, come to this meeting, um, one at 11 o'clock and one at six o'clock tomorrow here in the basement. And also, please don't forget, we have a Thanksgiving Eve service on Wednesday night, just about 45 minutes to give thanks to God. In our first service, when the prayer cards came up, I had a card that was a little hard to read, but it was from Eli. And Eli wanted us to remember God because God made us. You know, we fill out these prayer cards, people that we know who are hurting in one way or another and we want to pray for them, or a joy we may have in our life. But very rarely do we just give thanks to God for being God and for making us. So I thanked Eli for that, bringing us back down to the basics of why we're here. Brian and Deb Mailer want to ask us to remember Mason Bloom, his cancer has returned. He has spots on his lungs. Um, and so let's just remember him. He's 18 years old. And Lynn Bayer asks us to, work, to remember a co-worker whose father is in stage four cancer. Let us prepare our hearts as we go to the Lord today. Lord our God, we give you all the thanks and glory today. We put aside our own issues, the things we want to get done, our own busyness, and we just worship you. You gave us life, and we thank you for it. We remember all those who are less fortunate than us, and today, especially remembering those who have lost so many loved ones, who have lost family, who are trying to search for family in the fires in California. Lord, bless those people. Be with those who are responding 
in volunteering with help. And Lord, we just don't have any answers for why so many had to die. But we do know and affirm this day that you are in charge of the earth, not us. Lord, be with those that we've already mentioned. Be with those un unspoken requests that we have. We remember all our shut-ins, those who will face surgery, those still recovering from surgery. We remember all those who are maybe on their deathbed right now. Lord, touch those who are incarcerated, the hungry, the thirsty, those fighting addictions, the abused, all those who are considered outcasts in your world today. And give us a heart, Lord, full of gratitude and thanks, willing to share our faith with all we meet. And now we lift up to you the prayer you taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand for the reading of the scripture. <coughs> Today's scripture reading is from 1 Samuel, 1st chapter, verses 4 through 20. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to his wife, Panina, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her and the Lord had closed her womb. And because the Lord had closed her womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Elkanah, her husband, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you so downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? Once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on a chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. In bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. And she made a vow, saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long will you keep on getting drunk? Get rid of your wine. Not so, my lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She said, May your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. 
Early the next morning they arose and worshipped before the Lord and then went back to their home at Ramah. Elkanah lay with Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, Because I asked the Lord for him. This is the word of God from long ago for the people of God today. Let us pray. O Lord, open up our ears, our eyes, the eyes of our hearts and our souls, so we can hear your word to each of us today. Encourage us and make us bold to be able to share our faith with others. In your name we pray. Amen. We are God's ambassadors in the world, and we are called to share our faith through the way we live our lives, through words, through deeds, through actions, fearlessly. That was in our call to worship scripture this morning. I'm going to say it again because it, it is the meat of sharing our faith. We are God's ambassadors in the world. We are called to share our faith through the way we live our lives, through our words, through our deeds, and through our actions, fearlessly. Do we do that? Do you live your faith through the things you do and choose not to do? Sometimes it's hard. Here's an example. An elderly woman walked into church. A friendly usher greeted her at the door, helped her up the flights of steps, and politely asked, where would you like to sit? She replied, the front row, please. The usher said, you really do not want to do that. The pastor is really boring. <laughs> the woman asked, do you know who I am? No, he said. I am the pastor's mother, she replied. <laughs> he said, do you know who I am? No, she said. Good, he answered. <clears throat> How many times in our lives have we maybe said something to someone and then regretted it, or said something in a private conversation in a public place that was overheard? I know I've done it, and I bet you have too. We must think carefully how we live our lives because everything we do say, do and say, reflects God. And we are ambassadors. We are God's representatives in the world. Or maybe you're like this mother. After school one day, a first grade boy came home and said, Mom, the teacher asked me today if I have any brothers or sisters who will be coming to school. And the boy's mother replied, well, that was nice of her to take such an interest in you. What did she say when you told her you are an only child? She just said, what a relief. <coughs> <laughs> I know many teachers, after having our son in school, heaved a sigh when they realized there were three more laymans to come through. Sometimes the things we do and say are not what Jesus would want. And sitting in a pew on Sunday morning does not make us disciples of Jesus Christ or even Christians. 
Romans 10, 9 and 10 says this. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Twenty weeks we have spent on the topic of believing. We must believe it, that heart. We must know it in our minds, and then we must go out and show it in our actions. Everything you do, everything you say, shows what you really believe. <clears throat> I've used the story of Hannah for many different reasons, but never really for sharing faith. But her story, I think, shows her faith on a level that we can understand today. Hannah is loved loved by a husband. She could not bear children, but her husband loved her. We know that because it says so, but also because he gave her more portions than he gave his other wife of food. But Hannah remembers her past and is looking at the present, but is also looking at the future. Her husband is older than her. What will happen when he dies? We know his other wife won't take her in. She has no children to take care of, care of her. She would be destitute, out there on the streets, homeless, without food or anything. How long do you think she would have lasted? We'd never have known of her. So the fact that she doesn't have a son is a lot more than just not having a child. She is considered a failure in her faith because her purpose was to produce children. It's interesting, isn't it, in this portion of the story that Peniah only seems to provoke her the most when they are in a public place, and everybody is looking at them. You know anybody like that? She keeps pushing until Hannah, year after year after year, is so broken down that she cannot eat, she cannot drink, and I should imagine she has trouble worshiping God. And so one day, she gets up from the table and goes to the temple and falls on her knees. And it's amazing that the scripture tells us that Eli, the high priest, is sitting on a chair in the doorway to the temple. And remember, Hannah can only go in to the women's court where everybody else can go. She can't go any further. And he's watching her. It's amazing to me because here represents the man who is a direct representative to God, the high priest. And a lot later on, we find out that Eli, because of the wicked life he led, and because he did not raise his sons to be good priests, and because he's fat, he sits on that same chair, falls off it, and dies. And that's the God's truth. It's in the Bible. So it's amazing to me how there is a reference here to Eli sitting on a chair and what he represents when he's supposed to be representing God. Hannah pours out her heart to God. She holds nothing back. She totally surrenders, as we have been talking about the last few weeks. Undoubtedly, she's prayed before, 
and asked for her womb to be opened and asked for a son. But there's something different about this. She's not going to take it back. She's telling God the honest truth. No doubt, she's saying, I don't understand why you closed my room. Don't you see the misery I'm in? What is going to happen to me in the future? Don't you care about me, God? She unloaded, as many of us would like to, but sometimes fear to do that to God. And Eli comes up to her and assumes, because she's praying in her heart and her lips are moving, but no noises come out, that she's drunk. Now, if that was me, I'd have got up and popped him one on the nose. I'd have also done that to my husband when he said, aren't I better than 10 sons? Heck no, or something like that. You see, even her husband did not really understand her plight. And Hannah, in her faithfulness, does not get mad at either one. She takes her problems where she should, directly to God. And after the conversation, Eli then blesses her. And did you notice when she left the temple, when she got up? She walked out. She sat down and ate a huge meal, probably, which is appropriate for Thanksgiving coming up. And she was no longer downhearted. All her problems had been left at the altar, and she was going to live her life as God wanted her to. We know that later on, she has a son, Samuel. And she dedicates him to God. Because she said, I'll make a vow with you, God. If you bless me with a son, I am going to dedicate him to the Lord for the rest of his life. Now that wouldn't help her out of her predicament because she still wouldn't have anyone to look after her in her old age. But God knew that, and he blessed her with more sons and more daughters. Have you ever made a promise to God? Have you ever bargained with God? And if you say, no, I would never dream of that, uh, think again. I bet there were at least one or two of you yesterday afternoon watching a certain game who said, God, I promise blank if you just let Ohio State get their game together and win. And by your laughs, I'm guessing I'm right. We all barter with God. And then when things turn around, we go off and live our merry lives, right? You got to watch out. Because God will carry forth his promises and he expects us to. Here are the most important facts to learn from Hannah's story. Not only God, but all those around us are watching what we say and do all the time. Even when we don't think they are. It's kind of like uh, having a computer open where we found out that people can actually spy on you through your camera on your computer or through Alexa. When you ask them to play music, they can hear you. Now, I don't know how much of that's true. Somebody was listening in, they'd be totally bored in my house. But imagine everybody watching you and listening to you. Do you really live out what you truly believe? Does your lifestyle, even when people are not looking, show others that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? We cannot live a life like that alone. We must rely on the support of others. And we must be in communication with God to hear his will. For us. Today is Consecration Sunday. Not only will be we be consecrating our 
commitment cards, we will be consecrating ourselves. So take out your card, if you will. Some of you may already have filled this in. Some may be doing it right now. And we have provided you with an envelope. I know some people are concerned that others may see this. The only person who sees these are Erica, or is Erica, rather, as she inputs information into our program. I'm going to ask one thing, though. As you put your paper into the envelope, don't seal it unless you really want to. Of course you can if you want to. But that way we can reuse the envelopes. <laughs> I'm being cheap. Okay, I'm trying to save us money. We ask four things on this card. And I want to draw attention to it because it's important. It's what we've been speaking about. The first question is asking if you are willing to pray for our church and our denomination. It's no secret that there's problems in the denomination, just like the Lutherans and the Presbyterians have been through in other, other churches. And we're struggling right now. How often do you really pray for the people of this church? Do you pray for me so I can lead the right way? Do you pray for our leadership team that they can lead us into the future? When you check that box, I want you to be serious about your prayer commitment. Not a two-minute prayer as you're dashing down the road, but a time when you are specifically focused on God and lifting up our church and our denomination. And the second thing is asking if you're committed to attend Sunday morning worship as you can. It's easy just to, oh, yep, check that box. And next Sunday say, oh, I don't really feel like getting out of bed. Those are extremes. But are you really committed to your faith in your attendance and your presence? We are the body of Christ. And when you're not here, you are missed. The third thing says, I would like to serve as, and then there's a blank. Most of the cards we get back usually have this line still blank. So I want to ask you. We ask for people to serve as acolytes and greeters and liturgists. In fact, next week we will be passing the sheets. There's already sheets out there. But people then say, well, I didn't know. Well, that's probably because you're not reading the bulletin and not reading the newsletter or watching the, and reading the announcements. Are you committed to what you say you will do in the church? And in the beginning of January, I and some others, your leadership team, will be standing here telling you about the objectives and goals that we have just finished writing for next year. We have specific things that we are going to do. And I am given that task to carry out. The leadership team is behind this because we did it together. But we cannot do it alone. I cannot do it alone. A few weeks ago, we talked about your gifts, and you know you have gifts. Are you using those for God in the church? Maybe, maybe not. But I'm going to need help. Now, if you have a last name at the beginning of the alphabet, you're going to get a call first, because obviously that's where I'm going to start in the list if I don't have any names right here. If your name is at the end of the alphabet, one day I might just start at the end, so only you in the middle are safe. <laughs> I'm going to need help and so this church so we can move forward. We'll need lots of people to carry out these tasks. If you are willing to help, just put your name on that list, on that line, or rather just put anything, then I can call you freely. 
But are you willing to help this church move forward? If so, put something on that line. And then the fourth thing we ask for is how you are going to use your resources to support this church. We talked about money last week, and I left you with the question, do you give out of your wealth, or do you give like the widow did out of her poverty when she gave everything she had? Now, I'm not asking you to put your paycheck in the, in the offering. That's not it at all. But I want to give you a little piece of information. We walk into the church. It's warm in the winter, cold in the summer. Some of us complain about how hot it is or how cold it is. Well, suck it up. It's not going to be perfect for everybody. And the lights are on. We have the videos. We enjoy meals. There's one today. But that costs money. You know that because you live in homes and have to pay electric bill. Did you know it costs this church $50 a day just for the heat and the lights? So if seven of us said, we're going to give $50 a, uh, a week, or even $10 a week, <laughs> right? we're, or $50, we're only paying for a week's worth, What's everybody, and everybody else has to then burden, uh, are burdened with all the rest of the costs. We're in the process of writing our budget, which is why we need you to fill these out. Because as you know, you can write a budget and say, this is what we need. And then when we get these cards in and we don't come anywhere close, we've got to start cutting and cutting hard. And we've already done that. So please think and pray about what you will continue to put on these lines. And by the way, don't be like, or to avoid, rather, what I told you I did last week, where I kind of overlooked accidentally paying October's tithes. So I did October and November together, and that was like hard because it was a lot harder, a bigger of a check. Remember the story about the man who made more money and he didn't want to give his tithes? Why not sign up for e-tithing? I'm going to do that because then... I don't have to worry about whether I'm here or not. My tithes are paid. My obligation to God and the church is fulfilled. And I know Erica doesn't have to have a heart attack because cash flow is going to be good. We do this at home, but we're not good about doing it in the church. So I want you to think about that. Put your name down. If you haven't moved in the last year, don't worry about your address and cell number and email. But if you've got a different one, put it down so our records can be straight. Are you ready to dedicate your card? Hold it in your hands before the ushers will come and collect them. And we're going to pray. Oh, Lord. We dedicate these cards to you. We love you, Lord. You give us everything and ask us to give just such a small amount. Help us, like Hannah, to surrender to your will and to trust and show our faith in all we do all we say, and all we give. In your wonderful name we pray. Amen. The ushers will now come and pick up your cards.
and um, income has all been settled so wait till the beginning of the year if you want a copy of what that is call Erica she'd be happy to print it for you it's a lot of papers so we're not going to print them off for everyone but if you want to know nothing is a secret just ask her and she'll print that off for you in January let us stand and sing praise to God Amen, right? Let us pray. Lord, you lead us and you guide us. If we are willing to let go of our own will and follow you, and we need to be reminded of that week in, week out, and sometimes day in, day out. Lord, lead us, consecrate us. Let us be your people, ambassadors on this earth. And as we leave this place, go before us, behind us, beside us. And we ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all God's children say, Amen.